Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. This might be one of the craziest things that I have read in a while. BitPico, a group of Bitcoin developers, miners, and whales, which previously stress test the Lightning Network, have begun attacking Bitcoin Cash. In a series of tweets beginning on June 22nd, the group whose members' identities remain unclear, of course, declared that having tested Lightning Network's implementation for rigidity via a coordinated attack, it would do the same to test the Bitcoin Cash network, this time using a 51% attack. The Bitcoin Cash attack has been started. It will continue to run as we work to amplify it over the coming months, the first announcement said. We expect to have 5,000 Bcash attack nodes in roughly six weeks, and then we will multi-fork the chain. And then they said that Roger Ver uh, will then cry. Uh, BitPico had formerly made a reputation for itself as a champion of the Bitcoin network scaling solution Segwit2x. After a failed attempt to deliver the hard fork after support initially faltered, the group appeared to go silent, marking its return in a pro-lightning capacity in March. They said we are no longer retired from Bitcoin, just needed a break. We are bullish and working on the Lightning Network they announced sometime in March. At the same time, many of the problems Bitcoin faced at the time Segwit2ect failed had improved. Segwit adoption had reduced fees to a fraction of their previous levels, while transaction times had decreased. Despite progress, Bitcoin Cash supporters continue to claim the altcoin supremacy to Bitcoin, expanding the network's block size to 32 megabytes and rebutting criticism from pro-Bitcoin sources both online and in the media. For BitCo, whose previous stress tests on Bitcoin's Lightning Network received acclaim from figures including Andreas Antonopoulos, the attack on the Bitcoin Cash Network appears to have the aim of deciding its usefulness once and for all. They said we can just mine the transactions ourselves and drop the uh, merchants zero configuration transactions from our stratum backed mempool. They wrote, we don't think the Bitcoin Cash people understand how easy it is to bring their network down. This is what they said. Bitcoin Cash's in-house stress has also came in from criticism from BitCo, who called it centralized and controlled and will be faked. Despite repeatedly receiving death threats, along with a barrage of scorn from Bitcoin Cash supporters, plans continue to break Bitcoin Cash using a 51% attack, hard forking the network to create so-called BitPico Cash. Uh, I'm not going to read anymore because it kind of continues going on, but this is, I knew that we had stress tests before. I knew that there were companies who went out to stress test other uh, chains and stuff like that. But I think this isn't a stress test. I think this is a... Uh, we're going to prove that we can destroy your chain. Uh, the fact that they plan on doing uh, multi-hard forks and also 51% attacks, my thinking is, so you may have noticed over the last couple of weeks, I think it wasn't Bitcoin gold. At least around five to 10 different uh, chains have had 51% attacks over the last couple of weeks. I think this is being done on purpose. I think something is being set up or I think just the people who are developing these chains or these coins or these projects have gotten tired of all the altcoins, especially ones that have forked off of them. And I think they're trying to uh, proclaim their dominance. If I'm not mistaken, I think Litecoin Cash was also one of the coins that was attacked. Um, I would not be shocked if it had happened from pro Litecoin people. Um, I, I said this before, maybe not uh, recently, but I think... Um, the people who are developing Bitcoin or were first d developing Bitcoin, I think you get annoyed after a certain point. Imagine you made something and then someone kept on uh, kind of copying it over and over and over. And by the you know 15th time, you kind of get upset. So it's a lot of the forks specifically have been attacked or the, like the really small altcoins that have deemed that they may be better than Bitcoin or Ethereum. These are the coins that are now being attacked. Um, they said, what was it? Somewhere... Six weeks time, they said we expect to have, yeah, 5,000 nodes in roughly six weeks, and then we will multi-fork the chain. Let's see in six weeks from now if we have news about this once again, if they have, because I like, like I don't think they're trying to uh, stress test it uh, as, as, as much as they are trying to destroy it. So a month and a half, let's see if they end up doing it, but they seem pretty adamant, and I would not uh, put it past them. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Next up. 
China is in the news today. The Digital Currency Research Lab at the People's Bank of China has filed more than 40 patent applications so far, all as part of an aim to create a digital currency combining the core features of cryptocurrency and the existing monetary system. Data from China's State Intellectual Property Service, or the SIPO, revealed two new patent applications on Friday, pushing the total number submitted by the lab to 41 over the 12 months since its launch. Each of the 41 patent applications focuses on a certain aspect of a digital currency system and, when combined, would create a technology that issues a digital currency as well as provides a wallet that stores and transacts the asset in an end-to-end -end fashion. For instance, the most recently revealed patent application explains how the Envision Digital Wallet would allow users to check any transactions made through the service, while earlier documents offered details on how the wallet can facilitate transactions. The ultimate goal, according to the People's Bank of China's patents, is to break the silo between blockchain-based cryptocurrency and the existing monetary system so that the digital currency can sport cryptocurrency-like features while being widely used in the existing financial structure. Uh, for example, at a high level, last week's patent further explained that the Envision wallet would not be limited, like a typical cryptocurrency wallet, to merely storing the private key to a certain asset, nor would it be like other <clears throat> mobile payment services that only reflect a number on an application's front end interface without users actually holding the assets in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. So this may clarify that China may actually be in the process of making their own cryptocurrency. I mean, you, you know, 41 patents is kind of a lot. Uh, but between China and Russia then saying no, that they're not creating their own crypto. I think we had three European countries who said no. I think Japan has also said no. I think India has also said that they may take some time to look further into it. China is on the, uh, the war path, I'll say it that way. Um, they have a lot of stuff that's coming to their country over the next two years. Um, if you have a chance, always nice to enlighten your mind. Watch documentaries on China and like t type in like China Digital Revolution or uh, China Cashless Society and stuff like that. And you'll see exactly why all of this kind of makes sense. They're moving towards something that uh, I fear could uh, allow governments to have more control than they should. I think that's the nicest way of saying it. Uh, but the problem is, is that I'm pretty sure that over the next... 10 years a lot of other countries will also start adopting what they're doing uh they're going for complete control and that's just how a lot of um countries do business uh but it's it, we're going to enter a moment in human history where um governments especially ironically because of blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies will actually be able to have um complete control uh i don't know how you feel about that uh, but it's definitely coming, and this is why the uh, the decentralized cryptocurrency sphere is kind of important. Because, uh, like I said, if you always do your research and look deep into it, not even like conspiracy theory-wise, like it's actually happening. Like this isn't like me saying, oh, put on your tin hats. Um, no, this is actually something that's uh, well on its way. You kind of have to just look um, at the documentaries and the movies and the news that's being put out there. Uh, but as of now, it seems that China is going to possibly become the first country uh, that ends up having their own cryptocurrency. Next up, this one is pretty interesting, and I'll tell you why in a second. Atomic Wallet, which is a custody-free multi-assets wallet with a decentralized exchange that supports atomic swaps has announced that they will be adding support for Monero within two weeks. They said on their Twitter, let's make a bet. We will add Monero to Atomic Wallet in two weeks. And for on-chain anonymous Bitcoin to Monero Atomic Swaps in less than two months, they said, remember this tweet. An Atomic Swap is used to refer to a smart contract wherein one cryptocurrency can be exchanged for another. The difference between them and exchanges is that there is no need for a centralized intermediary to oversee the transactions. Atomic swap transactions can occur cross-chain and off-chain. Atomic swaps are one of the most sought-after technological advancements in the blockchain space, with the first historical, historical atomic swap being between Decred and Litecoin in September 2017. 
What's interesting about this, it actually says a bit further. I don't actually have to like read it. I remember what it says. Um, what's interesting about this is that uh, a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges, you may have noticed, and I said this before, and it's going to continue happening, have started delisting privacy coins. When we get into the situation where we can use a decentralized chain or uh, exchange that is either off chain or cross chain or completely, you know, whatever, um, we can swap between these coins. Uh, it says later in the article, it says, uh, when you're able to, let's say you want Monero for something to purchase something and you end up just swapping your Bitcoin into Monero and there's no evidence of it. And even further, I knew there are actually a couple of companies. I know it's not happening by the, uh, the core developers of, uh, Bitcoin anymore, or rather maybe it's hush hush. But there are definitely a lot of plans to add types of uh, privacy features on top of Bitcoin. This can be done by smart contracts and um, not cross chain, like uh, side chains uh, onto, on top of the Bitcoin network. And, and I still wonder, we've heard so much, uh, more or less, you know, nice reception from governments and banks who are calling it a uh, digital gold and digital this and a store of value. And they love it so much. And I wonder if they'll still love it. Uh, when you are able to send private Bitcoin transactions, because a lot of the things that are happening right now, if you read around, I always say this, just read. Um, when it comes to governments talking about other cryptocurrencies or the US government in particular, when they talk about Bitcoin and they say that it's decentralized, uh, one of the things that's always noted inside of the articles is that Bitcoin can be traced. We have known this for quite some time. If you think you are using Bitcoin and you're being anonymous, you are not. It can all be traced incredibly easily right now. Uh, but when you are um, able to send it privately and other people are as well, I wonder if uh, regulations will change or if they'll end up uh, coming out and declaring it a security just to be able to uh, kind of wrangle it back in. This is, you know, something that kind of goes through my mind, uh, but it's incredibly important in the cryptocurrency space right now. What's happening, at least behind the scenes, kind of like this news usually isn't in, you know, in the front lines all the time. What we have a lot of is a, a huge amount of decentralized exchanges that are being built. And also a lot of work is being put into atomic swaps uh, between all the coins. So eventually when we can swap between at least the top 20 coins without actually having to use an exchange or we're just using decentralized exchanges that eventually gets to the point where they can't be hacked. This We are going to have a very different cryptocurrency space. And I, you know, if we enter a future where governments are accepting us and everything is nice and we're completely uh, woven into the traditional markets because we can be uh, traced and, you know, they know what you're doing with these coins, except for the privacy coins, what happens? How do they take us out uh, five years down the line when everything is already woven in? How do you then destroy a multi-trillion dollar market I, I i'm i'm pretty sure i made that clear as possible but um atomic swaps are definitely coming and um so are uh privacy layers on top of the coins that can already be uh tracked it's going to be a very interesting future folks next up robin hood is in the news stock and crypto trading app robin hood became the subject of rumors on june 26th after the company posted a job advertisement for a multi-skilled cryptocurrency engineer. The vacancy, which comes one month after Robinhood raised $363 million to expand its Robinhood crypto spinoff, makes specific reference to wallet creation, leading to a speculation from commentators and plans, uh, its plans to offer its own in-house storage option. They said what we have created so far only scratches the surface of how Robinhood envisions cryptocurrency to play a role in our users' lives. Specifically, prospective candidates will be required to build out new functionality, such as adding new currencies or providing wallet functionality, as well as utilize blockchains for new features or infrastructure. Earlier this month, anonymous sources close to Robinhood told Bloomberg, Plans were also afoot to obtain a U.S. banking license with constructive talks ongoing between executives and regulators. The two advances together would place Robinhood in a position to compete with market stalwart Coinbase, which, as Cointelegraph reported in May, is also seeking banking rights. So between Robinhood trying to become a mini bank and also creating their own cryptocurrency wallet, Coinbase is trying to become a bank in essence, and they're also trying to become a... Uh, regulated security holder dealer 
don't know exactly what I want to call it, uh, but it's very interesting that we have moved on from these places, uh, you know, just holding cryptocurrency for us, so being able to buy it from them, to them trying to become full-fledged banks. Uh, um, eh, it's just a lot, I don't know, it's, it's very odd, all of this is very weird. Uh, I, I guess this was the next, you know, stage of evolution <laughs> when it comes to all of this. Um, I didn't expect them to just remain, uh, you know, cryptocurrency wallets or places where we could buy or sell four coins uh, for a long time. I know a lot of people have had not issues with Robinhood, but I think they, um, I think before the way you had to take your coins out is that you had to sell it. You had to swap the money into something else and then you had to buy another coin. So I assume this is their way of kind of getting around it because I've heard before that the, uh, way that you did it before just actually wasn't the greatest, especially when you were using Robin Hood. Next up, this is quite interesting, a little bit, more or less. Um, Witek Radomski, who is the co-founder and chief technical officer of Engine.com, has created a new standard known as the ERC-1155 for tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. The standard in question is for defining tokens for video game items on the blockchain. Notably, Engine is a service that allows users to build video games on the blockchain with support for fungible and non-fungible tokens to represent game items. The coin with the name ENJ is ranked 163rd on coin market cap at this time. The ERC-1155 token standard allows for the creation of tokens with a slight twist. The items are stored in one contract as opposed to previous standards where each token had to define a new contract for itself. The contract contains the minimum possible amount of data required for distinguishing the contained token from others. The new token standard also allows for easier atomic swaps between tokens. As illustrated by Radomsky in his Medium post, a swap between two tokens established on previous standards would require four steps. This is due to the additional approval step required for each token being swapped. Moreover, the standard allows for the creation of fungible and non-fungible items. Fungibility is the property of a commodity wherein individual units of the said commodity are interchangeable. Video games feature both of these kinds of assets with ammunition, health kits, and other such assets being fungible, and armor, weapons, and other items being non-fungible as said by Radomsky. I'm not going to read what he said. I was um, listening to something a couple of days ago when they were saying, I can't remember the name of the company for the life of me, like at all, uh, props to them, whoever they might be. Uh, they were talking about uh, their blockchain solution or what they were building on the blockchain, and it actually was something very interesting that I didn't think about before. They were saying that in the, like, 1987, somewhere around there in the 80s, when you were um, playing Nintendo and stuff like that, you know, you didn't really own your items that were on it. They were kind of in the game, kind of set as it was. And then around, around the time, 1995, when we had the Final Fantasy games start rolling out on PlayStation, for those who play these games, you know what I'm talking about, um, you were able to get items in the game, such as arm, armor and weapons and, f and fire and this and all these spells, but you still didn't own them until we had um, like first-person shooter games that came out on the computer, um, especially, I believe, World of Warcraft, where you actually owned the items that were on your actual account. And this is kind of similar to what they plan on doing or what the idea behind this is. Um, there's something that I still... Um, not trying to wrap my head around, but I think the idea of digital scarcity is just kind of new because uh, we can't touch it, but it does exist. We know this with all the other coins and we know this with Bitcoin. There's only a certain amount of coins that are out there. But when it comes to uh, uh, digital scarcity, um, they're trying to create something new wherein um, games or the games that you were playing will create armor and weapons, kind of similar to Crypto Kitties, but with armor and weapons. And pretty much you will be able to own this the same way you kind of owned it before with World of Warcraft, but it will be on a contract on your blockchain, on your computer, wherever you want to have it. And then eventually you'd be able to sell it for profit somewhere down the line. So kind of similar to what we kind of already have, but they're trying to do everything on the blockchain. Um, I think things like this are incredibly interesting because I still hold the belief that what will bring cryptocurrency forward, at least in the long run, is um, something to do with gaming, something to do with, you know, where we're all waiting for that killer app. But I think games are popular enough that you can definitely get enough people into the cryptocurrency space by giving them the, you know, the game that they're, they've always been looking for and then, you know, letting them allow to, you know, be able to... I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You guys, you guys don't understand what I'm saying. I think, I think gaming will change the cryptocurrency space. I think I was looking at the controller too much and I completely... 
lost track of what I was trying to say. Last up, this might be the most interesting news story of the day. In one of the worst bull runs since the correction of February, the cryptocurrency market has been in a slump. As of today, it is in a correction for 190 days, which is approximately six months. Bitcoin in particular has taken a hit, shedding 69% of its value from its all-time high. From a high price of $19,600, it is currently trading at $6,200, more or less. Every time I look at it, it's actually gone down by a tiny bit. Spencer Bogart, a partner at Blockchain Capital, spoke on the recent bearish trend in the market. He does hold an extremely bullish view on Bitcoin and gave his reasons for believing so. He said, a lot of the ICOs are very overvalued. Bitcoin has the mind share, the distribution in almost every major country has a major fiat on ramp. He also said that Bitcoin is the safest from a regulatory perspective. This is in respect to the SEC agreeing that Bitcoin is not a security due to the fact that it is decentralized and does not represent a stake in a company. Like I said, I wonder how long this will last um, once privacy happens, because I can't think of a logical scenario where Bitcoin transactions, let's say Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, Qtum, Cardano, and EOS can all have private transactions in the next five years. I don't know what governments would do. Like, what do you think they would do? I don't think they would respond uh, with open arms saying how great this is for the community. Anyway, continuing on, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are safe from being declared securities, said Bogart. He went on to say that Bitcoin has proven use case and that it has traction. He also stated that Bitcoin has demonstrated the ability to move value around the world and store it. On the current state of the market, Bogart stated that the dip might be caused by the 200 to 300 crypto hedge funds initiated in the summer of 2017. That particular period last year was a hotbed for investing in cryptos due to the upsurge in interest. He stated that as the funds are hitting the one the end of their one year lockup, investors are realizing that the price is down by 50% in this year. This, in turn, leads to the redemption of the fund, which means forced selling in the market. This indicates a continuation of the current bearish trend. Even as these funds are pushing the price down, Bogart stated that prices are going to buy, are good to buy right now for Bitcoin, and that there is increased selling pressure. However, he said, I don't think trying to hit the bottom is a good strategy. Don't time the market and average into it. That's what I'm doing. So this may be the seventh, eighth thing as to a reason as to why the market has been going down. It appears a lot happened last summer that a lot of people just weren't paying attention to, uh, even 2017 in general. Between this, between the uh, the futures market being started, uh, hedge funds selling, uh, retirement funds, all the other things have been sprinkled on top of this bear market. It appears uh, that also uh, the one-year lockup period for the funds that got into Bitcoin last year are also ending. Um I think it's accumulation of the entire thing that happened. I think uh, the entire price rise up last year was a major mistake. I think too many people FOMO'd into the market. This is kind of where we are now. Still people talking about that um, July is going to be the time when the market goes back up. I wish someone had a... No, no, not a wish for that. I'll, I'll shut up. Um, <laughs> you realize I, I've said, uh, or rather I've uh, quoted people every single month. Uh, they said this since March that the market was definitely going to go back up, and now we have some type of news that when these all these funds end, you know, there could be some type of, you know, bullish thing that ends up happening in the market. Who knows when it's going to happen? I don't want to say if ever. That sounds too pessimistic. <laughs> it's definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of, you know, when at this point. <laughs> all right, everyone, I'll I'll stop the video here. Hope you guys have a great day. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you once again for all the support. I do appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Thank you once again for all the support. And I will talk to you all soon. See you.